Right, this is Bhattaram Sembe talking to you from the west coast of Norway. Uh, what I want to talk about is seed and seaweed harvesting. Here is one thing which I saw for myself which I found very disturbing. Here it is called tara trawling. For hundreds of years Norwegians have harvested seaweed along the coast here for various reasons. But in the last few years it's been taken over by one large company using huge steel dredges and trawlers. Their yield is not far short of 200,000 tonnes per year. Here you can see one of the dredges with the steel cable attached to the sledge going out the back. It goes up and down and up and down in the same place for many months until the seabed is scraped bare. Then it gives a four-year period before it comes back again. Some of the papers you'll see later talk about giving a minimum period of seven to nine years. Here you can see a sledge being brought on board, everything that is attached to the weed and often what the weed is attached to. Here you can see what an empty barge looks like, how much capacity there is. This is a fully laden one. And if you look carefully, you can see in the photograph, the still photo, that everything is attached. Roots, hole fasts, and the stones which the roots are attached to, too. This is the depot where the tar is taken. There you can see they can load it onto a ship. The big digger behind loading up the loading device. And there is the ship. I don't know how many thousand tons it takes, but that's a good few. The depot is on the little island of Smörholm, just off the Atlantic Havsvejen. Now this is a little bay just where they've been tara trawling. In places this is two meters deep. The smell from this rotting seaweed stalks is absolutely gut-wrenching. I understand the gases of decomposition are also highly toxic. This is uh, a seaweed root with a sponge attached. The sponge filters the seawater. Another reason why seaweed is so vital to the sea. My journey, like so many journeys these days, began on the internet. I first found papers talking about the benefits of seaweed and how much there was and how much they were taking out of the sea. Then I found this. This couldn't be right. The coast of northern Brazil. It's dotted with villages completely dependent on the sea for their livelihood. The fish catch has been in sharp decline, according to local fishermen, due not just to taking too much, but taking out a key part of the ecology, seaweed called Brasilaria birdii. Much sought after by the food and cosmetics industries, the beds of the precious seaweed all but disappeared. More papers revealed research on how much seaweed there was off the Brazilian coast and how much could be taken out and how much the country could benefit from it. Huge industry was set up. Now the same seems to have happened here in Norway. This is a paper from the Seaweed Symposium detailing the devastation on the seabed around Skagerrak where the seaweed has disappeared. This is a paper from Korea talking about the problems they have in the seawater related to seaweed and eutrophication. It also goes on to say how this is similar to what happens in freshwater and that this could be mitigated by um, pro proper aquaculture. This talks about how nitrogen is removed from the sea by seaweeds and how it could be very useful for cleaning up the sea. This talks about how seaweed removes carbon dioxide from the sea just the same as the r rainforest does from the air. All in all, it seems that seaweed is a vital part of our ecology. Here is a warning from a group involved with harvesting seaweed. It says 
that mechanical harvesting of seaweed may never be sustainable. This one talks about how damaging over-harvesting of seaweed, in particular mechanical seaweed harvesting, can be to the seabed. It also points out what may have happened at Skagerrak. This next paper goes on to reinforce that fact, and it's from the same source. Um, harvesting methods and how they can damage and how they do damage the seabed. Another result of the loss of the higher sea plants is the bloom of unwanted sea plants like these ulva species. The bloom is something like 20,000 square kilometers in the Yellow Sea, the same species that has caused so many problems off the French coast. The algal bloom has happened because the normal seaweeds are not there to take up the nutrients and also because the um, campaign in the 70s for putting sewage into deeper water on the English coast was very successful and so the water, the sewage has been going into oxygen depleted waters and just staying there and it's not actually been broken down by the natural processes which are occur in coastal waters. Um, again this has a strong relationship to seaweed harvesting in the rest of the North Sea. The methods used to harvest seaweed on the Norwegian coast are not sustainable. To have a country like Norway which is rich in so many other resources and in money to actually allow this to continue is totally reprehensible. Just reflect a little bit on what would happen if tara husting is allowed to continue in this manner on the Norwegian coast and the rest of the Norwegian coast follows what has happened in the south as far as concerns seaweed. We would lose all our fish. With the fish would go the tourists who pay top dollar to come here to fish. Norway prides itself on its nature and taking care of its nature wake up, come on, do something about it, this needs to be sorted out and it needs to be sorted out now. Just one last little paper. This talks about how many organisms there are per square meter in a fully grown seaweed forest. We are looking at a hundred thousand individuals, up to a hundred thousand individuals per square meter. The density of life in a seaweed forest is quite remarkable. This paper in Norwegian comes from the Sea Research Institute in Norway.